Okay, this is uh, section 3-4 and it's on counting techniques and we can start to use the Excel sheet uh, in this section. Uh, we'll use it here in the next video but not right at this point. Uh, the fundamental theorem of counting says that if events are independent of each other, in other words the outcome of one does not affect the result of the other, then the number of total outcomes that these two events equal is the product of their individual events. Well, that's a lot of uh, talking and it's, it's hard to understand what it means until you get to an example. So let's see the example. This question here says, how many outfits can be put together if a person owns three shirts, two pair of pants, and one tie? The tie is optional, and assuming they are all matching. So, for example, he could wear one of these shirts with either one of these two pair of pants with either the tie or not the tie, and he'd have an outfit. And we want to know all the different possible outfits that they could have put together here. Well, they're independent because we're assuming that all are matching. Whether he wears this pair of pants is independent of whether he wears this particular shirt because they're all matching. They're independent of each other. This pair of pants does not depend on whether he wears that particular shirt. So the way to think about this is just we have three different things going on here. The first is his choice of shirt. He has three choices for the choice of shirt. After that, he has to pick out uh, the uh, pair of pants that he's going to wear and he has two choices for that and by the fundamental theorem of counting we just multiply these together and also we have a third thing going on here and that is the tie now some people at this point would say well he doesn't have a choice for the tie because there's only one tie but he really does have two choices since the tie is optional since the tie is optional he can either wear the tie or not wear the tie so there are two choices and again by the fundamental theorem of counting we just multiply these together and we get 12 possible outcomes. 3 times 2 times 2 is 12. Now you could list, do a tree diagram for this and what we would do there is just say well he puts on either shirt A, shirt B, or shirt C. After he chooses the shirt at the end of each of those lines we say well he could either use wear pants A or pants B after each one of those and then after each of those we could say he could either wear a tie or not wear a tie and we could would still get 12 paths that uh, are independent of each other so there are 12 different ways. Now uh, let's go to the next one. How many uh, different ways could you rank 10 people from highest to lowest? Well with this again they're independent of each other you're just randomly picking the first person and on the first person you have 10 choices. After you pick that person to be the first person in line, then you have nine choices for the next person. Then once you pick that person, you have, what, eight people left to choose for the next position. So it would be times eight, and you get the idea we would just continue on in this manner until we finally have times one. So we would just be multiplying ten times nine times eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one, which is called factorial and uh, it's called factorial anytime you take start at a certain number and multiply the integers down to one that's called factorial so this 10 times 9 times 8 which definitely is no, no fun to do on, on a uh, regular calculator is also known as 10 factorial and we write that 10 with an exclamation mark 10 with an exclamation mark is read 10 factorial and that means 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 and so on and uh, We'll do some more problems that, that do factorial on the next video, but let's go ahead and go on to uh, permutations and combinations, and then the next video we'll get into the Excel sheet. Permutation is where uh, when order matters. Basically, like if you have a locker combination, believe it or not, your locker combination is a actual locker permutation, because if your locker combination uh, say you have a three number combination to your locker and your locker combination is 32, 20, 12. Well then you have to go in that order. You have to put the numbers in that order and that would be a permutation. So remember when order matters it's a permutation. When order doesn't matter it's a combination. And these can be done on calculator and they can also be done on the Excel sheet. And these are the actual formulas to work the problems out by hand. Let me go ahead and at least do one problem by hand. Again, permutation is when order matters, like a locker combination order matters. And combination is not your locker combination. Combination is when order doesn't matter. Like, for example, you want to pick three people at random uh, to be on your team. And you don't, they, there's no special positioning of these three people. Just you're picking three people. Order doesn't matter then, so that would be a combination.
So anyway, let's take a look at some of these. It says, how many different ways can a vice president, president, and treasurer be selected from a group of seven people? Well, here the N would be seven because we have seven people that we're, we're choosing from. So the N is seven, and the X is how many people we're choosing. Well, we're choosing three people because we're looking for a vice president, president, and a treasurer, three people. So it is the N is seven, and the X is three, but is it a combination or a permutation? Well, with this problem, since it's specific titles that we're looking for, vice president, president, and treasurer, it matters what office the person holds. Like if we pick uh, Joe to be president and Jack to be vice president and Jane to be treasurer, that's different than Jane to be president, Joe to be vice president, and whoever the third person was to be treasurer. So order matters on this one. So this would be a permutation, a permutation because what? Order mattered. Just like your locker combination, order matters. So this would be a permutation. To work this out, I would just substitute 7 in for n and 3 in for x on this formula. So I would have 7 factorial, and I would divide that by 7 minus 3, because there's three people here taken, 7 minus 3, which is 4, 4 factorial. So I would take 7 factorial divided by 4 factorial. Well, 7 factorial is actually 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And I would divide that by 4 factorial, which is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Now this looks like a big mess, but really what happens on these problems is the 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 divides out with this 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So all we're left with is 7 times 6 times 5 on the numerator. So we'd have 7 times 6 times 5. And if you multiply those together, that's the same as 42 times 5. And that would be 210. And that's that problem done by hand. Um, the next one says, how many ways can three people be selected from seven people? Well, here, we're not giving any specific order to these three people like we did on the previous problem. So here, order doesn't matter, so it's actually a combination. So to work this problem out, it's actually, again, the n is 7, so it would be 7 factorial. And that would be divided by x, which is the number of people you're selecting, which is 3 factorial. 3 factorial, and also in this denominator would be an additional, let me put times, an additional um, n minus x factorial. Well, n was 7, x was 3, so that's 7 minus 3 factorial or uh, 4 factorial. Now, if I work this out, again on the top, I'm going to have the exact same stuff I had before, the 7 times 6 and so on. And on the bottom, I'm going to have all the stuff I had before, the 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 because of the uh, 4 factorial. But I also have on the bottom a 3 factorial. So I also have on the bottom a 3 times 2 times 1. So that would give me, just taking the 7 factorial divided by 4 factorial, I have the 210 I had before. But I have to divide that now by the extra 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. And 210 divided by 6 is, uh, let's see here, 210 divided by 6. Let's see, 6 goes into 21 3 times with 3, le with, uh, three left over. So I think it would be 35 right there is what we would get. Now we'll do these on the next videos, uh, on the next video using the Excel sheet.